guilty. First degree murder. You know, I just can't see her doing it. You know they want you dead. So why don't you give them that closure? Wait! <laughs> Wait, we're gonna do a little throwback case that we know. It's a little 10 minute video real quick. First degree murder. That's the one thing that Jody Arias' jury can agree on. Under that dark mm -hmm. hair and those bookish glasses, the mind of a murderer. But does she deserve to die for the way she killed her ex-boyfriend? The jury is still deliberating, but the now convicted killer sat down one-on-one -on -one with ABC's Ryan Owens as she contemplates her fate. Jody Arias speaks. Ladies and gentlemen, I have received your note indicating that you are unable to come to a unanimous decision. After just two hours of deliberating whether yeah, Jody Arias should huh? live or die, the jury of eight men and four women said they were deadlocked. But almost five months into this, the judge wasn't about to accept that. Please go back to the jury room and continue. God, y'all know that there was a member on the jury that was sitting there and saying, you know, I just can't see her doing it. I just can't picture it. I just couldn't picture a nice Christian girl like that doing it. Um, so, you know, I'm out. Which, it's like, you're wrong. Listen to the evidence. Continue deliberating. You are excused. Please stand for the jury. The jury spent another five hours deliberating today and she will looks be so back happy. at it again tomorrow. They already convicted Arius of the first degree murder of her ex-boyfriend, Travis Alexander. Guilty. The 30-year-old mm -hmm. Mormon businessman was stabbed 27 times, his throat was slit from ear to ear, and he was shot in the face. Here comes the Jody interview. Just hours after her final plea for mercy, we found out the 32-year-old wasn't done talking. She sat down with me for a 40-minute jailhouse interview Four Tuesday minutes. night. You said today you want to give Travis's family closure. You know they want you dead. So why don't you give them that closure? Wait! <laughs> Is this a mock <laughs> You know they want you dead, so why don't you give them that closure? What do you mean by that? Why don't I kill myself? Is that what you're asking? No, why don't you Obviously, said, accept the fate of the death penalty if you know that's what they want? She kind of said it was If you truly care about their closure. Yeah. Okay. I've caused them a lot of pain. I've caused my family a lot of pain. And I think that by asking for death, I'm only going to cause more pain to what? my family. Why didn't you apologize to them? I did apologize to them. You never said I'm sorry. I said that I said that I'm sorry, that I'll never be able to make up for what I did. Wait, hold on. A am I tripping? Did Jody ever finally like confess that she did it? The quote from her that sticks out into my mind is when she said, No jury will ever convict me. But like I I don't I don't recall her ever confessing that she literally did murder him. I mean it sounds like she's saying it now kind of i said that i said that I'm if sorry, you kill my I'm child don't to talk to me what I don't did. say i'm sorry and I don't 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 loss. but you didn't use the don't word say anything. i'm sorry well then i'm sorry i didn't say that because certainly i am sorry i think in a sense i the the words i'm sorry just seem meaningless especially since yeah, nobody believes what i'm saying anyway you said it right there no one believes a word out of your mouth oh my god why do you keep talking because I know that what? I'm not just, I've lied before, that doesn't mean that I'm a liar. Excuse me, I have lied before, and you guys have caught me in a lie. You took me to trial because I lied to everybody, and I was lying, but that was an act. I am not a liar, and I'm sorry. Okay, but I feel like sorry is meaningless. Wait, what? <laughs> like, what a mental gymnastics? By definition, by okay. anyway. You said it right there. No one believes a word out of your mouth. Why do you keep talking? <laughs> because I know that I'm not just, I've lied before. That doesn't mean that I'm a liar by definition, by character. To a lot of people, they think this switch from I want to die to now I want to live is just another lie from Jody Arias. Okay. I don't know what that means. Was I lying when I said I want to die or was She's I lying when I said girl. please spare my life? You know? Um, whatever happens, so I'm just sweet. going to take it and deal with it. You've said that sort of thing a lot before, including right after you were arrested. You said, my goodness, if I did something this horrible to Travis, I would beg for the death penalty. Right. You did it, so what changed? <laughs> changed my mind. Is this a real 
fucking interview. You guys know when like they they cut in some. I mean, this is I guess this is, this is the nightline. This is real. Oh my god. You know, I think that they have to approach the interview this way to a point because they know that nobody can get through to Jody. Like she's just gonna keep lying. So like you may as well just. You know, I would not be able to sit up in an interview the way that Jody is right now. If I like truly didn't do it, I would be catatonic right now. I would be medicated the fuck up. I would be disassociated to another state. I my thought process would be, I can't believe that this can actually happen. This is last words to the jury were downright bizarre. She argued for life in prison by essentially presenting a political platform for the rest of her life behind bars. There are many things I can do to affect positive change and contribute in a meaningful way. She's like, don't kill me so I can manipulate the jails. In prison, there are programs I can start and people I can help. Oh. She almost sounded like she was running for student council president. She told the jury she wanted to start a recycling program in prison, a book club, oh. Spanish lessons for other inmates. This is the t-shirt. She was kind enough to bring uh, a sample of the t-shirt she designed oh. to raise money for domestic oh violence God. victims. She wants to keep selling those. This. Oh, and she told the jury if she lives, she can keep donating her hair to cancer patients who need wigs. I need to pause before we get to whatever the fuck he's about to say. I did not, did you know that Jody Arias ran for student council in prison? It reminds me of people that feel that, like they need to present worth in order to, you know, uh, something. So she's like, look at all the things that I can do. And it's like, hold on, Jody. Nobody asked for that. Like, did you, did you do it? Like you did, you did it. Okay, well, we're going to look and see what the handbook says about what we do with you because you did it. <laughs> like... ...statement today, you talked about all sorts of things you might be able to do in prison. Teach other prisoners Spanish, donate more of your hair, um, start a recycling program. Do you know how trivial that sounded in the face of what you did? Well, there isn't a whole lot that I know about prison. And these are only things that I'm able to ascertain <laughs> from having never been there. So... I believe that when I get there, oh. I will find ways, better ways to contribute and pay back. But can't you grow out your hair on death row and donate it? Yeah, um, it'll be less wigs if I get executed. I mean, fuck? I know that sounds trivial. It but does. That's what, that's the only way that I can contribute. I'm limited. I'm going off to prison. I can't, there are so many things that I'm no longer going to do. So in a sense, I was grasping at straws, but these are things that I can do. And at this point, that's what I'm holding on to. If you were on that jury and you had heard what they have heard, would you kill you? I don't believe in capital punishment. Um, so the answer would be no. In this penalty phase, the jury heard from no character witnesses for Jody. But my fondest memories with him. Are no friends, no family. Even though her mother has been in court every day of the almost five month trial. That's it. I want to interview convicted murderers like that. And you know, it's got to be people like Jody. I can't be running up on Nico Jenkins like that. I, it's got to be people that don't know nobody outside of jail, okay? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna ask Nico no questions like that. I ain't gonna ask Angela Simpson no questions like that. But Jody, I want to do that. One thing that surprised a lot of people <laughs> is that no one from your family got up to say anything nice about you when you were facing the possibility of the death penalty. Well, that was a defense decision and one that I was somewhat in agreement with. My mother wanted to. She had a letter written out that she wanted to read and my dad was fired up. He wanted to talk. That's not true. Jody's parents did an interview later that basically said um, that she was weird. Uh, Jody Arias' parents said daughter had issues. The parents of Jody Arias claimed their daughter dealt with mental problems and was strange when authorities interviewed them two months after Travis's murder. No, your dad wasn't fired up, sweaty. <laughs> and my defense team didn't call either of them. But the impact of that is that you've lived on this planet for 32 years and you have no one other than yourself to come up and vouch for your character as a person when you're facing death. Well... I did have people. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to do it. Where I need some type of dis quick disguise. I guess I. So, need you guys to imagine the news interviewer that's like, so, what? What was what was Jody like when she was growing up as a, as a kid? I don't know. She was just weird. She was strange. Jody was. I mean, she was ours. She was weird. I mean, we, my wife and I, we have. 
we have mental health problems, you know? My wife's just, you know. Uh, but Jody, we didn't really talk to her, you know? She was just coming home, and she'd just be, she was just like, fucking weird, you know? My wife didn't really talk to her. I don't really talk to her. You know, I'm weird myself, but, like, I was like, oh, did we raise that? <laughs> so, um, you know, I never met Travis or anything like that. Like, this is, like, horrible. But I'm, I'm not surprised. My kid's fucking weird. She's fucking weirdo. I don't think I've ever heard that in a case where the parents later do an interview and describe the child as weird. <laughs> Not even, not even Casey Anthony, who literally accused her dad of abuse to like get out of the case. And they were not called. I loved Travis and I looked up to him. At one point he was the world to me. One of the other things you did say today is, look, I don't want to drag Travis's name through the mud. And at the same time you say that, you were up on that stand accusing him of abusing you and being a pedophile and all sorts of terribly awful things. What does that say about the kind of person that you are? that I was truthful. I didn't want to do it, but I was obligated to do it. I was under oath. So the only other option was to lie and say he was perfect. And to people who say you shot him, you stabbed him, you slit his throat, and then you killed him a fourth time when he was already dead oh, by yeah. making up things about him to ruin his reputation, you say what? Nothing was made up. Nothing was made up at all. I mean, it was a defense strategy for me to take the stand. And once I was on the stand, I was obligated to answer the questions that were posed to me. And that's what I did. But you know no one believes you, right? <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Maybe a majority of people don't, but I know plenty of people. Have you guys ever had a conversation with somebody before that outwardly just wants you to die? Like, that's what, that's exactly what this is. <laughs> I can't believe she took the interview. People that believe me. If you get life in prison, mm -hmm. you could conceivably get out someday. Do you deserve freedom? All I know is that if I were given freedom again, I would handle it very, very responsibly. So you think people should feel safe if Jody Arias is out of these four no! walls at some point? I think so, yes. If you're not abusing me and attacking me and threatening to kill my life, there's no reason to fear. You really are still sticking with that story? It's not a story, it's the reality. And it's unfortunate, but it is the reality. Okay. I didn't know that you were a hater when you came to interview me. Oh my! Is this a c comedy? <laughs> Am I in a comedy? <laughs> is this a mock interview? Is this actually Jody? Is <laughs> Sorry, I just went straight rue on y'all. <laughs> I can't even do that again. <laughs> Seems surprised by the tough questions. By her own admission, she lives in a bubble behind bars. We talked to a lot of your friends, some of whom said that Jody is the most hated woman in America right now. Do you feel that? No, I don't feel it in here. I'm so um, incubated in here. Nice and I cozy. hear things, and you know, a lot of what gets to me is the positive. They filter out the negatives. But you did know there were hundreds of people cheering outside of the courthouse when you were convicted. I did hear of that, yes. And what do you make of that? I don't know. I really don't. A lot has been made about your appearance and your change in appearance. Was going from blonde bombshell to sort of the mousy church librarian look in court, was that a defense strategy? Was that your idea? What was that? No, they don't sell Clairol hair dye in jail. So this is my natural hair color. But there was more than just the hair color. The glasses, yeah, nice, nice overall the demeanor is very different than the person that you were before this crime happened. What about that? Well, this is a court of law. It's not a place to go and act crazy or... Oh, I shouldn't use that term, but it's not a place to- I'm Jody, and I'm so respectful, but don't, don't, don't abuse me! Like, what the fuck did she say earlier? As long as you're not abusing me or hurting me, or what did she say, to kill my life? Jody, come on. Jody! Jody! Let loose. It's a court of law. And in that court of oh law, God. the jury will resume its work tomorrow. Will Jody Arias spend her life in prison or be sent to death row, oh where there are no more lights, no more cameras, and no more TV interviews? which just might be the ultimate punishment for her. I'm Ryan Owens for Nightline in Phoenix. That guy's a good interviewer. Do we need more? Do we need more of him? Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. This was before she started Recycling Club.
she's literally like a little kid. 